hearts of the churches and to us. I had a good news today. I had really good news. Been been uh, oh some forty years waiting on this news. You want to hear what it is? Do you? Somebody told me they're going to name their next baby after me. I've been waiting for this, begging for this, embarrassing myself for this. Somebody came up to me today and said, I'm going to name my next kitten, William. Your next kitten? Your next kitten. Next kitten. She said, would you like it to be Lord William or Sir William? I said, well, <laughs> Sir William will be good. Let's stand and sing together. Uh, number 28 in your hymnal if you want to use it. about that lyric all other ground is sinking sand now you nautical people listen up there's a place in the keys right past marquesas called the quicksands the quicksands the spanish named it if a boat got stuck in the sand there it would just it would just sink into the sand and be gone all other ground is quicksand the only sand that the only foundation that's going to hold us is the lord jesus christ i love these nautical songs let's pray together father One more time, we come in the name above every name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us. We pray that you'd take this meeting over. We pray that you would preside, blessed Holy Spirit. You would convict of sin of righteousness and of judgment. You'd help us to see ourselves as you see us. I know we can't take too much too long, but help us, Father. We pray that the Lord Brother preaches, the Spirit of God may take over, the Word of God may be pervaded and pervasive here tonight. May, Lord God, you cast out all the evil that would seek to destroy this meeting. We pray your hand will be upon the missionaries whom we're trying to talk about this week and meet this week and the whole mission program, the giving to missions and all of this involved. We pray that we could renew our commitments and strength to support world missions for Christ. Help our country. Father, we pray that you convict our country of sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Shake hands one with another. Say hi. Don't let anybody go by.
good, that's good. That's good, that's good. Tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock sharp, down at Bonita Brunch, there'll be a, we call it the South Breakfast. If you'd like to come to that, they got free coffee down there. And we have a North Breakfast up at the uh, Perkins on the corner of uh, Ben Hill Griffith and Course Group at 8.30. And that will be, you'll be welcome. There is no free lunch for that. But anyway, we're trying to get some free coffee worked out for them. We're not quite there yet. So appreciate your support and missions. I really appreciate you coming and supporting our Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday meeting. Put everything else aside. God will bless you for it. He really will. He'll touch you touch your and help you. We're going to have a baby shower next Sunday night uh, for the Cassidy Stolfus's baby. Amen. And Easter sunrise service on March 31st. That's about two weeks away. 7 a.m. If you can help us in some way to usher that or pass out gospel tracts to that event, we do need your help. Brother Chris is going to be the one responsible for that meeting. And if you will just get with him and see him. Say, I'd like to be part of that. You're gonna, are you going to have a meeting Sunday night? Next Sunday night, you're going to have a meeting? Yes. You want to call it now? Yeah. Okay, so next Sunday night, we're going to have a real short 10-minute organizational meeting for the beach, which will be the Sunday after that. So if you're going to help us on the beach in some way, hey, thank you so much. Appreciate it. And may the Lord bring the people. As, and, and I want you to begin to, if we would, pray for the weather. Pray for the weather. It's so important. The only thing that can really knock us out of that whole beach service would be a rainy, windy morning. Now, and I'm, I, I could go back and count, but I'm going to say we've been doing that. I'm going to say we've been doing that service uh, over 20 years. We received it from a Baptist church that had been doing it for 26 years. So that's about 46 years. So in 46 years, it's never rained on Easter morning. And in Florida, that's big. So continue to pray that he would just give us no rain for the morning. Amen? No rain for the morning. I have literally been driving from my house to preach the breach service, and it was raining all the way till I got down to the church here. And when I got down to the church here, it quit raining because I was all bummed out all the way here, but I'm going to show up anyway. And so I came down there, and it looked rainy, but it didn't rain. We had a bunch of people show up. And we got to preach a service. And we got done with the service, and they collected their equipment, started raining again. There's a God in heaven. May he have mercy on us and hold the rain back for the time we're going to be there. He knows the only reason we're going down there is to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all we're there for. So lift the, lift the sun up, that when they see him, they may be saved. Those with uh, Bible verses, if you'd make your way up here, I'll give you a chance to quote what you've been studying. As they make their way up here, I would like to put a little plug in for Pastor's podcast, Wisdom for Your Walk, uh, over 175 episodes. Most of them are about 10 minutes long, something like that, and we're pretty faithful about uploading them once a week. I think they'll be an encouragement to you. You can find them on Apple uh, Podcast. Uh, you can find them on Spotify and a few other places. So if you want me to set that up on your phone, uh, it'll take maybe 30 seconds. I'll help you out after the service. Okay, 1 Timothy 2, 5 and 6. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be, and to be testified in due time. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished on all good works. Amen. Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Good job, everyone. Moving on to our track count now, I hope you've taken advantage of the opportunity this past week to pass out some gospel tracks, and we'll record what we've passed out this week. Ms. Atto?
Middle section. I had 15. Okay. Anyone else? Great. Anybody else? All right. Well, so far, we've passed out 22,835. This week, 2,635. 2,635, another wonderful number. Hope you can join us this Saturday, 945, in the courtyard as we go out for door to door. If you've never been before, uh, don't be too intimidated. It's only a couple hours, sacrifice a few hours of your time. About by noon, the latest, most people are back. And so hope to see you there this Saturday, 945 in the courtyard. All right, stand with me if you would, please. Number 172 in your hymnal if you want to use it. Are you on the Lord's side? This is Ralph Wendell from Indiana, and he's going to sing special music for us this evening. As the little boy said, when his dad got mad at him and threw him over the shoulder in church and hunted out, headed out the back door, he said this, pray for me. That's what he said. So you pray for me in this song, okay? Because uh, it's the first time I've done the song. I love the song. It goes like this. Listen to the people crying everywhere, groping in the darkness, 
with a load of care. Listen to the hopeless living in despair. Is there none to teach them and the gospel share? Oh, the Heavenly Father, listen to my prayer. Free the selfish servant from my worldly care. Help me spread the message that the world may see Jesus' love in me. And to every person a proclaimer be. Thank you for your spirit working in my heart. I see my transgressions, cleanse thou every part. Where I've been so blinded by my vanity, grant me heavenly vision to win the loss to thee. O oh, the heavenly Father, listen to my prayer. Free the selfish servant from my worldly care. Help me spread the message that the world may see Jesus' love in me. And to every person a proclaimer be. Other Wendells are deeply involved in missions and reaching the world for Christ. Their life is laid down on the altar to do the will of God and see people saved. Pleasure to know you. People like that have a vision for the loss. What's this week entail? Well, we invited three missionaries, one from the Congo, one from the Philippines, and another one, which I'm not sure where they were going, but they had her wife had a miscarriage and could not come. And so they canceled the last minute. So Chris and I were going to make, rearrange the schedule to where it was going to be Monday night, Tuesday night, and then Wednesday night we were just going to have the two missionaries that are here do a, a little bit more on Wednesday night. What we do, if you come at 6.30, we'll have about 35, 40 minutes for the missionaries to show their uh, little DVD or slide or whatever they got to show us and to give us their call into the ministry. They're, they're also testimony of salvation and try to share with us their vision of what God has given them to, and what country they're going to, in this particular case, the Philippines and the Congo. And oftentimes, I, there's an electricity about this. There's a, there's a power about this. You get excited. You kind of get in, the, in these missionaries' heads. You get to know them some in this time. Boy, I hope you don't miss that. There's a Q&A session at 6 o'clock, I believe, if you want to come to that Q&A, it's a really good time. You can ask whatever questions you want to ask. There is a moderator. And so there will be a 20-minute. After 20 minutes, we, it's over. So the answers will be succinct and concise. And so be able to get enough questions in and encourage them. You can ask them how much they're raising to go to the field. You can ask them why they're raising it. You can ask them what field, how they plan to win people to Christ. What's their game plan. You can ask them any question you want to ask them. It's not limited. So that's at 6 o'clock. Then there'll be also some donuts and some coffee. Now, Tuesday, we're having an election in Florida. Did you know that? Did anybody know that? There's going to be an election in Florida Tuesday. That's how big it is. Nobody remembers it even as well. But there's going to be, well, we're, elect, we're going to have an election in Mac Hall, so there'll be nobody going into Mac Hall on Tuesday. You know, we're going to have our, any goodies we have, we'll have them in the choir room right behind us here. And we'll, if you want some coffee... We'll have some donuts or cookies, possibly, and some coffee. So Tuesday night. So the uh, I was this morning. So Chris and I had decided just to have two missionaries, and that was going to be it. We'd like to usually have three. This morning, I got a phone call early. I couldn't answer it. I went over and looked at it, and it was uh, Max Yama. Yeah, I got an early phone call from him. I, and I actually, it was yesterday morning. Excuse me, yesterday morning. And uh, I went over and called him back, and he was... Uh, just called me to thank me and for caring about him. And, and I, I love gratitude phone calls, trust me. It's, it was really shot in the arm for me and encouraged me. And I got thinking, hmm, I wonder why he called me on Saturday. 
So just before missions conference, which we just lost the mission, I said, Brother Max, would you be willing to come up from Key West and give us a, a two years, it's been about two years since we've heard him, give us a two-year report on what you're doing on Wednesday night. And he goes, well, let me check with my wife. We've got two kids, wife. He says, can we all come? I said, bring your whole family, bring your wife, two kids, bring them all up on Wednesday. So we're excited to have him. Max Yama, and you'll appreciate Max Yama, his spirit. He'll be here on uh, Wednesday giving a, about a 30-minute report on what's going on in Key West with, with the Southernmost Baptist Church. That's the name of the church. And they had, sometimes they've had over 200 people. They've had many people saved. I think they just baptized 20 people in the Gulf. God is doing a great work down there right now through those folks. So that's exciting. On Wednesday night, we'll have that. We support him as a mission, by the way, to help start that church in Key West also. So that's our schedule. How do we raise money for all this? Well, we just ask people to give love offering. We don't ask visitors to give. We don't recruit visitors to come for their money. We just want them to be here. But the people who are part of Gospel Baptist, friends of Gospel Baptist, um, we're the ones that support these type of meetings. We pay for the flights out and back. We pay for the motel rooms and places they stay if there's a charge. And then we give them a love offering, whatever's left over. We like to say that we knock their socks off, and we do normally knock their socks off with a love offering at the end of the missions conference. It's just, I never know where it comes from. I don't know who gives what here at the Gospel. It was just a free will offering, and it's exciting to see what God's going to do for us and these people when we send them off on Wednesday to go back home and be encouraged. Hopefully, my, my prayer is for this missions conference that you would be encouraged to be part of the missions program in prayer and in finances to be part of the missions program. Also, it's my prayer that we encourage the people who come. That we, that my, I mean, to be honest with you, we've had you come from California, but we're here to encourage you. We want you to leave here fired up. But you know, want to do, we want to go back to gospel again sometime. Not like, oh, brother, I'll never go back there again. No. And we're, we're, here to fire, we're here to fire up those missionaries, and, and, and they may have gone to places and been discouraged by the, by the support that they've received or whatever, but we want to encourage them, give them a shot in the arm, Tell them, not only will we give finances for you, but we're going to pray for you. I pray faithfully for those missionaries back on that wall, faithfully. I try to learn who they are, what their families are like, what the problems they have, and I call out before God and ask him to help them. And so when they come, I can recognize them. That's big when they walk in here that you recognize them. They say to me, sometimes they go in churches and they have no idea who they are. That's why I pray for pictures. Because when they walk in, I say, hey, there's one of our missionary couples back there. And so, glory to God. That's a good way of doing it. We've done it now for this to be our 44th year. And hopefully the Lord will bless us again this year in that. But with all that said and over, I would like to introduce to you Dr. Medical Doctor George Crabb. All right, if you have your Bibles tonight, the book of 3 John, the book of 3 John, talking about missionaries, Linda and I had the opportunity uh, February, uh, well, just a year ago, February of 23, to be a part of what is called uh, Spiritual Leadership Conference Asia, and uh, we went for a couple of weeks. We went first to South Korea, and were able to minister to missionaries there in that region. And then after South Korea, we went to the Philippines and were there several days. And what, what goes on at that conference is uh, the ministers of the gospel, pastors, assistant pastors, missionaries, their families come together. And we're there to encourage them, give them some education, some encouragement. And uh, the last night of the meeting... Uh, was in a convention uh, center. There was over 10,000 uh, people at that meeting uh, the Wednesday night that we ended it. I gave a session on you know, dealing with stress and anxiety in the ministry and also about depression. And my wife and I counseled several uh, missionary uh, families in regards to whatever issue they needed counseling. And so praise the Lord. It's good to hear that one of the missionaries that will be here uh, this week is going to the Philippines. And as I said earlier, we'll be going back to South Korea 
uh, in just a few weeks. We, we actually go home, uh, which is a good thing, and then we're uh, at a, a church in California in Ventura, uh, and then right after that, the second weekend in uh, April, we're back in Florida up at Astatula Baptist Church, uh, preaching up there for the weekend, and then we're back home for a week, and then we're to Fort Worth, Texas at Worth Baptist, uh, preaching for them for a weekend. Uh, they're having a mental health weekend that I'm preaching for them. And then we're back home for a week, and then we're gone uh, to South Korea uh, for uh, about 10 days. And then from South Korea, we're going to England, and then England home. That's going to be about a three-week trip, and we get to fly around the world. And so we praise the Lord for that. Hopefully we'll make it all the way with all that's going on with Boeing and things of that nature. Hopefully we'll make it. Uh, but the Lord's keeping us busy, and we like that. We love serving the Lord, trying to encourage people, try to help people, uh, especially those, not, not just those in the ministry, but just generally the family of God. And uh, it has been already encouraging to be here, again, seeing many friends uh, in their place, serving the Lord, faithful to the Lord. Uh, it's an encouragement to my wife and I, and just driving around the area brings back so many memories uh, as we were here uh, for seven years at the gospel, and uh, just praise the Lord. So third John, uh, we're going to talk this evening about courageous love, courageous love. So the song that was sung, thank you, my friend, that was beautiful and uh, very uh, appropriate at any time, but especially with the message that I'm going to bring tonight. We talked this morning about courageous faith, how to have courageous faith, and we need that today in our lives, not only for our country, but for our, our families. Uh, we need it for our church, and we need it for ourselves to have that courageous faith, uh, to be stepping out by faith, living by faith. Uh, as ye have received, Christ, Paul told the Colossians, as ye have received Christ Jesus, how do we receive Christ Jesus? By faith. So walk ye in him. So we're saved by faith, we walk by faith, and we need that courageous faith in our lives uh, today. But we also need courageous love. Look at 3 John, verse 5 through 8. It says, Beloved, thou doest faithfully. Now he's, John the Apostle is talking to Gaius, the pastor of this church. Uh, here he says, Beloved, thou doest faithfully. Whatsoever thou doest to the brethren, so he's talking about saved men and women, and to strangers, and that word strangers there is talking about missionaries, those that had been sent out to carry the gospel message and were coming by this church for support, for encouragement, uh, and for comfort. And so those are the strangers he's talking about there in verse 5. Verse 6, which have borne witness... Of thy charity, that agape love, that unconditional, sacrificial love before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well, because that for his name's sake went they forth. Missionaries are not going forth to build their own kingdom and to puff up their own name. They're going forth in the name of Jesus Christ to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and to build the kingdom of God, taking nothing of the Gentiles. They don't want anything from the world. They're not looking for support from the world. Uh, they're looking for support from the men and women of God, from the local assembly that God established. We therefore, talking then about the church, we therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. So I want to look at how this church, and I really believe this church personifies this courageous love, being here for uh, a little over seven years. Uh, it really does demonstrate what this church is about, and I believe it is the demonstration of the love of God, not only locally but abroad through mission support. And so I want to talk to you how to continue that and the importance of having a courageous love in this church and in our lives. And join me as we pray. Father, we come to you in the name above every name, Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior. 
and we ask that your spirit would once again meet with us tonight, that you would work in every heart, work in this church as your body, that this place would continue to spread the gospel locally and abroad. I pray that when people look at gospel, they see the love of Christ. Not only do they see it, but they experience it as they interact with the membership here and with the pastor. So, Father, I pray that you would, through your spirit, give us wisdom, understanding as we look into your word this evening. I pray that you would again maximize the message and minimize the messenger. And this we ask in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I see a few things about this church, and again, I believe gospel really personifies what we're talking about tonight, and that is uh, certainly something that is good to know, but I see three things about this church that the Apostle John is writing to and talking to their pastor about the charity that they had in their church, and that's the first point, is the charity of the church in verse 5 and 6. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers, which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well. And charity in a church does a few things. Charity comforts. Charity comforts that sacrificial, unconditional love that comes from God comforts people. And my friends, you and I can comfort each other as children of God, as brothers and sisters in Christ. We should desire to comfort one another. And not only comfort one another, but people that pass through gospel. They might be just here for a season. They Could be a missionary coming through, but that if they're a brother and sister in Christ, that we comfort them, that we help them. Because people need to see the love of God in this world today. There is so much hatred and there is so much separation. There's a lot of hatred out there. And what people really need to see is the love of God demonstrate in our lives they not only need to see it but they need to experience it and I truly believe one of the reasons and because I believe there are several but one of the reasons Jesus shook people to the core was his love for them he really loved them I look and I was happy to see about the bus ministry I was happy to see as we walked in, almost getting hit by the bus and thinking about suing it that Brother Gillespie was driving. I I did have my lawyer's number run through my mind there for a minute, but thankfully Linda pulled me out of the way, or or maybe she was shoving me in the way. I don't know. It it, it could have been, I would have been in heaven and she would have been rich. Uh, So that, as Pastor said, that's a win-win. But that's a demonstration of the love of God. Those children talk about no hope. They have little, if any. But that bus coming by is a beacon of hope. It's a demonstration of the love of God. People that see that bus, they see the love, and then those that come on it experience the love. And we have to realize, I know at times uh, young kids can be unruly, and hey, how about us adults? Can we not be unruly at times? But think of the environment they live in. The drugs, the alcohol, the profanity, the insecurity. And we can give them the message that can liberate a soul from hell through the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what I'm talking about. This is the charity of the church. It comforts not only us as brothers and sisters, and it's wonderful to get together with you all again and to see how you're doing and to praise the Lord together. But as these missionaries come this week, I don't know if we have any with us tonight 
or if they're coming uh, throughout the week. But as a church body, uh, and as me, as, as one of the speakers for this week, may we comfort them. May we demonstrate the love of God to them. May, may we support them. May we encourage them. And may we pray for them. It says in Hebrews 13 too, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. You don't know who's going to be coming by, and so let's treat everybody with the love of God with compassion and with empathy. Amen. A missionary that's in Africa texts me about 12.25 a.m. Florida time. We got in last night about 9, 9.30, got to where we're staying a little after 10, and he texts around 12.25 a.m. because his young son had a productive cough and was having some struggle breathing, and wanted to know my advice. And so I gave him my advice. Uh, and thankfully he took it and, uh, and is acting on it. But as we continued to text, he said, no one else knows this, Brother Crab, but uh, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit spiritually. We've had a hard week. The devil is really attacking. At their anniversary Sunday a few weeks ago, they had 688 with 20 saved. Devil doesn't like that. That's stepping on what I call the devil's tail feathers. Amen. And that rustles his feathers. He said, I appreciate the advice he gave for his young son, but he says, I really need your prayers. And I text him back and certainly said that I pray for him regularly and would do so more specifically because of the battle he's engaged in. And I gave him Psalm 4017, which is a wonderful verse to memorize. I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tarry, oh my God. God, I, I know I need you next week. I know I need you next month. I know I need you next year, but I need you now. God, make no tarry. And I told them, meditate, memorize that verse. Meditate on that verse. And as these people come in, and not only the missionaries that will join us this week, but as visitors come in, and, and you guys do this wonderfully already, and I want to encourage you to continue to do so. As missionaries come through, as visitors come through, and as just our, the membership comes through and is assembled together, we don't know what the other person is going through. We do not know the battles they are engaged in, the struggles they are having, and they don't need a quick little barb or sarcastic little thrust into their side they need a brother or sister in Christ that's demonstrating the love of God Amen. and encouraging and comforting them and realize when people come by as the Bible says for thereby some have entertained angels unawares so the ch charity comforts but also charity continues the gospel work as it says there in verse 5, that they doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers, thou doest faithfully. They did this consistently. They demonstrated the love of God, encouraging others, supporting each other. It was their DNA. It's just what they did. It's who they were, the love of the brethren. They comforted others. They encouraged others. They supported others. And even though we need to support missionaries financially, I think even more so we need to pray for them spiritually. Another missionary that I had come to see me, he came in on furlough and wanted a physical, and I gave him a physical, and we were talking about the mission fields. He was again. He, this is another missionary that's in Africa right now. And I said, uh, you know, what are your needs? Your needs, because my wife and I would like to help you and support you, etc. And he says, you know what, Brother Crab, I really don't want your money. 
He said, God will supply our needs. He says, I need prayer for spiritual protection. Because where they are is dark spiritually. And he says, I need God's protection. So he says, the money is fine. I mean, obviously, we all need finances to survive. But he says, I really desperately covet your prayers. And that's what we can do. We can support the missionaries and help them evangelize the lost. And I love the track count. I was so happy that you still have the track count. My wife has taken, taking those little business card tracks out to California and in the Walmart and in the in the uh, shopping stores, she's shoving those things in places and people, I'm sure, they don't know sometimes where they're coming from, but they're opening up their case of beer or they're opening up their TV or their toilet or whatever it is and out falls a gospel track. <laughs> and so we, so it's, it's not only here, praise the Lord, it's still here, Amen. but it's spread help the missionaries evangelize the lost, not only out there in the world, but you and I need to share the love of God as you do with the bus ministry, as you do with Vacation Bible School, as you do all these things. Not only in the world picture are we supporting missionaries to get the gospel message out, but also doing it here locally in this area because there's a lot of hurting people in this area that need to see the love of God, not only evangelizing the lost, but encouraging brothers and sisters in Christ and above all, exalting Jesus Christ in all that we do. And this love, this charity, this sacrificial, unconditional love permeated this church that the Apostle John is writing to. Secondly, I, first of all, I see the charity of the church, but then I see the generosity of the church. This was a mission-minded church. I see that in verse 7, because that for his name's sake they went forth, taking nothing of the Gentiles. They were supporting missionaries to advance the goal. It was for his name's sake. They go out to spread not their message, but the message of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, to help them go forward, to advance the cause of Christ around the world. That's what, they were, that's what they're all about. And it's generosity that we can have for the cause of Christ. Amen. And I want you to listen to this statement that I wrote down. Please understand it. Our standard, your standard, my standard of giving is not the person next to you, it's the cross of Christ. Amen. Your standard of giving is not the person next to you, behind you, in front of you, but the cross of Christ and what he gave, and he gave his all. Help them go forward. And it also says in verse 8 that they receive them. As these missionaries come in this week, and I know there's going to be a few, that we welcome them as they're coming home. Comfort them, love on them, pray for them. There's nothing wrong with taking them aside to the side of the auditorium or in the back vestibule and just having a 30-second prayer time with them. Amen. God help us. Show that type of love to the missionaries. That's what this church was doing, and I believe you do this. There's nothing wrong. I like now when people at our church, we, our church is several thousand big, and the college is about 500, and I'm asked all the time, would you pray for me? 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 And what I have done now is I'll stop what I'm doing at that time and say, okay, let's pray now. And, 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 and just... Get, get it done and pray for them. Pray for the situation. Because I, I, I have uh, obviously a brain, I, or I hope I do. My wife says sometimes I do, but I tend to forget those things at times, and I don't want to forget someone that needs prayer. And so take a missionary aside. Say, hey, uh, how can I pray for you? And they say, well, we're having this struggle. We're having this battle. We need a generator. We need a van. We need, we need a transportation. We need a building. We need songbooks. Uh, we need spiritual protection. We need uh, freedom to preach the gospel. Whatever the need is, say, let's do it. Amen. Let's pray right now. And it doesn't have to be a 30-minute prayer. It can be... 20, 30 seconds, and I'm going to tell you, it's going to mean everything to that person. 
everything to that person, praying for God's blessing and favor on them and their family. It's for his name's sake, generosity for Christ's sake, but also generosity without expectation. I'm not giving to mission so that I get stuff in return. I'm just giving because I love the object of what I'm giving to. I love those children that are out there in some third world country, in some other place of the world, that has no hope right now, and that someone will come one day and knock on their door and say, let me tell you about Jesus. That's what I'm giving for. Now, what can I get in return? Now, we know that in doing so, that's an investment in heaven. I call it my heavenly 401k. And I have astronomical interest rates because they're governed by God. And so generosity without expectation. And as it said in verse 7, they, they taking nothing of the Gentiles. It's not, the world's not going to support the missionaries. The world doesn't care about the little children and adults that are out there lost and undone going to hell right now. But the church should care. And we, the church, should support those missionaries. And many of us do, I know, in here. And so I see the charity of the church. I see the generosity of the church. Thirdly, I see the sincerity of the church. It says in verse 6, help them go forward or forward on their journey. They're advancing the cause of Christ around the world. I cannot go, you cannot go to some places where they go. I know we had a couple that, at, that sat at one of our dinner tables when we were in the Philippines. Where were they going, honey, in Africa? And I'm putting her on the spot, so don't. This may not be a good night, Brother Sweat. You know, it may not be a good night here. That's a, they just kind of latched on to us. And, we're, and there's thousands of people at this conference, and there they would be. They would find us and talk to us. And they were waiting to get their visas to go back to the country in Africa they were going to. Because the people they left there were texting them and emailing them and calling them, when you coming back, when you coming back, when you coming back, we need you, we need you, pastor, we need you, pastor, we need you, pastor. They were advancing the cause of Christ in that area of the world. I'll never be able to go there. Some places we're able to go, but I'm not able to go to all places. But we can support those that do go and that when they do come, as I've already said, that we receive them, uh, we, we welcome them home, we comfort them and love on them, pray for them. As it says in 2 Corinthians 8, verse 7, Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith and utterance and knowledge, And in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others, and to prove the sincerity of your love. We need to partner with missionaries. No raise of hands here, but when's the last time that you emailed a missionary letting them know that you were praying for them? Now, it doesn't take much effort, but it's a big encouragement. When's the last time maybe you text one or sent a a letter by snail mail uh, to a missionary? Let's be fellow helpers of the truth. That's what it says there in verse 8, fellow helpers of the truth. Help them spread the gospel. I'm going to tell you, we see so much as we counsel people that have been abused People that have been traumatized, they're in the depths of depression, they're, they're wrapped up in anxiety. Ye shall know the truth, and this is the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. John eight thirty two. I'm all for medicine, obviously that's what I do part time. But my medicine cannot touch the soul and spirit of a man. But my God can. 
Who can renew a spirit? God can. Who can restore a soul? God can. I can't, but God can. And we need to partner with missionaries to get the gospel message out so that we can lead people out of an eternal separation from God into uh, heaven as their home forever. And we need to, to get together with the missionaries, partner with the missionaries, not only to get the lost saved, but then to disciple the saved, to start churches, to further the ministries of the Lord Jesus Christ, and build God's kingdom. Giving connects us. We had a lady that were counseling for a very significant issue. She's a college student, and her grandmother just passed away. And her situation, this young lady has to pay her own college uh, bill. She doesn't have support from her parents, but she believes God would have her at the college preparing for ministry. And so she had bought a ticket. She had to actually fly into Tallahassee, Florida, where her grandmother passed for the funeral. And we've already established a bond with this young lady because we've been counseling for months. But she said, well, I bought, I only could buy a one-way ticket. And I said, well, don't worry about it because your ticket back is on my wife and I. And I don't say that to boast. And then I said, you know, things are getting pretty expensive out there, especially at airports. Bottle of water, $5. I was hoping they'd put something special in it, you know, for $5, you know. That's the best bottle of water I've ever had for $5. Wow. And so I pulled out my wallet and gave her some cash, and I said, have a snack, get a bottle of water, get something to drink, get something to eat on your travels back and forth. You know what that does? That connects us. And when you invest your money in the missions program here at Gospel, it not only connects you to the missionaries, it connects you with your pastor, connects you with this church because there's investment. Help should be given to the missionaries. We should help in truth because truth is vital. Because as I said, John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Galatians 5, 1, talking about the liberating gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's important for only the truth makes free. And there are, there are many people that are helpers of wickedness. Do we not see it all around? They're promoting their garbage. They're promo promoting their humanistic philosophy. They're selfish Philosophy, they're out there ranting and raving and acting as true animals. May you and I be facilitators of the faith. May we facilitate the faith by supporting missionaries and getting involved ourselves. Advance God's kingdom. As I pray, I always pray when I speak, maximize the message because the message I pray comes from the word of God. Minimize the messenger. It's not about me. I cannot change a life. I cannot renew a spirit. I cannot restore a soul. But my God, my Savior, through his spirit can do those things. So I want to uplift him. May we love with a love that comforts and continues the gospel message. It's easy to say, oh, I love you, but may we show it. Amen. Show it by picking up those kids on the bus, Brother Glassby. Sunday school teachers have some grace. I tell people every time uh, that I, mostly when I counsel, every morning, breathe in God's grace so that you can breathe it out to others. Amen. 
May we love with a love that comforts and continues the gospel message. May we love with a love that is generous, and you all are. But may I encourage you to continue to be so. May we love with a love that is sincere. As Paul told the Corinthians, and to prove the sincerity of your love. This world does not need our criticism and condemnation. That doesn't mean I condone the sin of this world. But what they need is the love of God. Amen. And Gospel Baptist, God has chosen you in this area to demonstrate his love through. So I ask you, how is that love being demonstrated in your life? Are you encouraging and loving to your fellow members? And are you loving and encouraging to others that you'll never see until the other side of eternity to supporting missionaries? We talked this morning about courageous faith. Courageous faith will give you, help you with that courageous love. This world needs to see the love of God in each and every one of us. Put away the sarcasm, put away the digs, and put on the love of God. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus again. Father, thank you for your love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Thank you for giving your son. Jesus, thank you for following your father's will. Holy Spirit, thank you for coming into our lives and being our comforter our counselor, our guide, because you say that you'll guide us into all truth. I pray that every individual here tonight knows Jesus Christ as their Savior. I pray for every child of God that right now there's a burning in their soul and spirit from the Holy Spirit working in their life that even though they may have in times past demonstrated the love of God, it's their desire to continue to demonstrate the love of God. Let us run through the finish line strong. And if someone is having issues that they've not been demonstrating the love of God, may they determine tonight, tonight I'm turning the corner, I'm putting a nail in it tonight then I'm going to start living out the love of God in my life to all that I come in contact with. With your heads bowed and eyes closed, I just want to ask, I never want to assume that everyone's a child of God. If you here tonight have never experienced the love of God by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want to pray for you. I will not embarrass you. I will not come down and get you. I will simply pray for you. But you say, Brother Crabb, I don't know. I've never really experienced the love of God. I, I don't know if I'm a child of God, and I want to be. Would you pray for me? Could you just slip up your hand real quick? I'll acknowledge it. You can put it down. Anyone like that at all across the auditorium? Children of God, brothers and sisters in Christ, as you sit there with your heads bowed and eyes closed, I'm not going to ask for a raise of hands tonight because you don't answer to me, you don't confess to me, but you do answer to God. You do confess to God. I pray right now that you'll take time and that you'll ask God to help you demonstrate the love of God to your brothers and sisters in Christ, to the missionaries that come by, and in fact to anyone that comes by. God, help me show your love, your grace, your mercy. Father, I pray that you would help your children draw closer to you. And may this place continue to demonstrate the love of God locally and abroad as we give out the gospel message. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Give me, give me a
a note. Yeah, there. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy promise You never know how God works in a service like this. You never know the still, small voice of the Holy Spirit, how he's dealing with people. I was in church since I've been two years old in independent, fundamental, Bible-believing churches. I've been in many, many missions conferences. And God, as a young man, I'd sit there and I was was fidgety. I wasn't the nice, I wasn't wasn't the... most well-behaved young man, I know you, you know that. And probably nobody looking at me thought anything was going on. But God the Holy Spirit was working through all those services, little by little, moving in my heart, calling me to himself. Father, thank you tonight for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for our brother's message. Timely. Pray that you'd help us to stay by the stuff. Do right till the stars fall. Don't quit. Father, encourage us. Speak to us. Show us what you would have us to do individually. Father, move in each heart of the born-again believers, part of Gospel Baptist, how we should help missions this year. What should we do for missions? How should we teach our children to care about missions? Father, just anoint our brothers as he speaks, as he's here. May we encourage he and his dear wife, may the missionaries that are coming be encouraged by being here. And when it's all said and done, we've lifted these folks up for the kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen. Thank you for coming.